Hello. Welcome to the best decision you've ever made. <laughs> Maybe second best if you watch this with your partner. So, we can start at the back. Tailgate opens up. You can see your bed. Unfortunately, this one is a bit broken at the moment. So, don't worry about that. You get the first bit of play, which is important. Now, strap in case I need to strap something down. If you stay on the campsite where there is a power, then we can use this one. If you look underneath in this corner, we find that there is a plug where this guy slots in. Just be careful when you unplug it, don't just pull on the wire here, yeah, hold on to the socket a little bit. And and it comes out so we keep this guy in here the bed adjusts there's a handle on the inside just there if you push it down then this can adjust it can go higher and lower and fixate in a place if you have chosen to have tent then all of this area will be full of tent. It's pretty impressively huge thing. You get an air pump with it and tent bags and uh, under cover, is it? Ground sheet, that's the right word. It takes a bit of doing to pump it up. It comes with like a bead, like um, almost like a rope that slides into the side here. You'll just feed it through and through and through and through and it kind of secures it in place. This one, I've seen more secure things in my life than that. If it comes off, just break it off, put it in a glove box and I'll reattach it. Then some other things you might hopefully not need is in this little box here. There's a jack and a stow bar. Um, and that's all. Uh, there's a uh, crocodile clips for your battery. That's in there as well. So only those three things. This is a table leg for the inside. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. That's that. We'll make this to close. When you open the door here, and you can tell your children, partners, everything. You don't pull on it like that. The hinge is on this end. So put the finger close to this end and it pulls from there. That end doesn't move. If you are inclined to pull hard on things, you might accidentally damage it. So we go right in here. Table leg goes in there and the table slides out from behind the fridge. It comes out, it's got a little thingy there. Pops on and jobs the button. I personally have only used it once. But, you know, it's there should you want to use it. This guy is a knife hat for the front, opens up, hangs, he's got like ears, will hang on the door and whip around so you have a little bit of privacy. Okay, I like to keep this one in there. You have a couple storage cabinets in there. Our little picnic blankets. In there, this one goes in there. There's quite a lot of space, eh? it goes all the way down. Should you want to add Bombay Sapphire in there? Your choice. This one, I have currently have things for cleaning. So there's a bit of fairy with a sponge. There's some napkins. Toilet paper and some wet wipes. There's more wet wipes in there. I do appreciate if you clean stuff as you go along. There's a USB socket here, should you want to charge things. 
is powered from solar panels above and so is the fridge a fridge little freezer for your cornettos sometimes very rarely it does go in maybe like electricity saving mode where you do then there's this um, dial you can make it cold I usually leave it quite low you switch it to zero and then back to one and that usually does trick for me but it doesn't happen very often uh, a little bit more storage space there I like to put my shoes there you can put anything else also and then we have running water and then two gas hobs we have lighter in here so if I open I can't remember which one is which oh this is a bit embarrassing I thought oh, I can hear something now There you go. So the furthest one is for this one. That maybe doesn't work. I've never used it because it's really close to the glass. So there should be plenty for your teas and coffees. You are not allowed to cook anything in. Next people will not want it to smell of bacon and eggs or fish or whatever, you know. You boil water for your tea and coffee if you want to cook you use disposable barbecue or something like that uh, ah yeah there's draw there's if you're stuck in the traffic I left you a book with great British useless information <laughs> you have some ibuprofen headache from whatever your partner is gonna cause for you or children and then I have this funky remote if you decide to have this go. I'll show you how the bed works now. There's again a little handle here. Get your hand in there and lift. And it, again, it's got like a ratchet mechanism with um, teeth. So this will stay whichever way you leave it. Your water is here in a tub. It undoes here with the strap, this screws off, you go refill your water, you come back. Don't open that, that is your gas tank. If you have opted for cooking or eating in a van, there'll be some uh, cutlery plates and things in there. I usually throw in some... Uh, foldable chairs for you to sit outside uh, if you have passengers to the back these guys yeah yeah seat belt things they like to flop down when you close the bed is a little bit annoying to fish them out so what i usually do is i try to sort of push them back in there a little bit this one is a little bit more friendly on this side bit easier to use so again handle up there's a third one down here which i've never needed to use but i'll see if i can pull it out i just need to get my hand in there and make sure that it stays up then you have safety safety and pull this back safety good 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 now exciting things can you see well yeah the roof is gonna come up this one folds down we'll let you in through the side so you can see a little bit better really simple system yeah you'll see the straps yeah it's like a really primitive ratchet not ratchet system don't know what you call it but yeah, these guys come up and then what I usually do is when my hair is no longer stuck in there, I'll just push up from the bed, up, up and up. And voila. So if you 
you stick your head through here, you'll see this bed comes down. Actually has really comfortable mattress up there and a safety thing for your kids not to fall off. I've never used it, I don't have kids. I've opted for cats instead. You can unzip all the windows. These guys should you have like a really nice view to look at. Yeah, I'm not gonna do all the windows, but it's pretty simple. You can unzip the whole of the thing and sort of fasten it up and then you have like a pretty cool panoramic view the only thing is when you go back around because it's only held on with a zip and the gas shocks will push it up make sure you pull down there's handles can you see handle yeah yeah pull down to get it a bit slack otherwise you might break the zip if you break the zip we both will be sad <laughs> um, disco sometimes it does work sometimes it doesn't most of the time it does it might need a new battery I haven't used it over winter sometimes it needs new fuel either way I'll give you some more battery it'd be pretty cool if it works now it'd be very convenient But unfortunately it doesn't, that's quite embarrassing, I'm not going to lie. We might edit this out, or we might leave it there for your entertainment. Mm. Clearly it doesn't work now. <clears throat> when it does, you can adjust the color on it. I'll do my best to sort it before it goes out. If you do climb up in the bed there, do not step on the hand rests, arm rests. It's very tempting because it's a little step up. If you break these off, again, we both will be sad. Use the seat and then do your best to crawl up into the loft space. The front of it is a car. There's nothing, you know, there's a steering wheel and some pedals and hopefully you know how to use both of those things. I'm not gonna go into explaining that too much originally it does have a reverse camera which has gone on strike at the moment the camera is there the image isn't but it still beeps when you reverse so that should be fine there is a little button right up here you might not be able to see it you might be able to see it it's your diesel heater sometimes if you press it accidentally by taking this <clears throat> table out it'll go Ooh. press it again it go <laughs> uh, I don't think I, I've never needed to use it I don't travel in winter I hope you don't need it if you do press the button it'll go on I think that's probably everything there's fire extinguisher which i hope you won't need and some mosquito repellent spray there's a handbook in the glove box and some fuses the fuse box is underneath the driver's seat with the spare battery which you shouldn't need to use have i forgotten anything ah, there's a there's a little light in here this little switch there pressing the switch the lights go on yeah that's interior light you need to get the roof down you shouldn't really drive with it up so few bits are important you need to leave this strap intact so that it pulls the fabric in there's scissors at the back, the hinge mechanism. If this gets trapped in there and cut, we both will be sad. So when I pull the roof down, I'll just go around and have a look if there's any fabric sticking out. To pull the roof down, I just get rid of this one a little bit. 
It's quite a funny technique. First time I learned it hard way, ever since I've done it better than that. There's two handles, yeah, yeah. And then if you pull the handles down and you forget that the bed is there, at some point the bed falls on your head. Not ideal, so what I usually do is I put my head on the bed and then it comes down and I put my head to good use finally and I control it down. See how this folds in? You don't want to look at that, so just gently push it out to that side. I'm still holding the bed up with my head. You might find a better technique, but this is what I have found find works for me. If it comes in still a little, I just push up from the bed. Let it come down, check. That's all good. Man, push this in there. So I have a little bit of access to the straps to fasten the roof. And we'll go outside and have a look if there's any fabric sticking out anywhere on the roof. Yeah. All clear. Coming to the front again. All clear. That's not that's good. That's my fault, not yours. Sometimes it does fall off. I'll see if I can. If it does happen, then simply push it back on. That. See, unfortunately, it's all for that at the back. Which is not ideal. Out. Let's go back and get your head here. So, this little guy feeds through there. When the roof gets used, often these ends get a bit fluffy and it's harder to feed them through. So, what you do is Push it through, find a corner, pull, get this one all the way to the top, and then there's this little lever you can press. It doesn't need to be crazy tight. Point out a few bits that are damaged. If we start from this corner, there's flaking lacquer on there, it's normal. None of the alloys are scuffed anywhere. They all are in good condition. You might not be able to see that well. There's a little scuff mark here. There's a little one there. And the Both corners, there's like little bits like that one way and some peeling lacquer on other way this carbon fiber thing is a little bit cracked there. that's fine there's no other scrapes or anything else on there so that's the peeling lacquer bit there's small tiny little scoops on there again alloys are all good this side has no issues apart from some scuff marks from bushes on the mirror. You come round the front, you get your usual stone chips here and there. There's nothing tragic. At the bottom here, there's a few white bits, which is normal. They're like little corners of peeling lacquer somewhere. And another thing, there's a small uh, chip on the windscreen it doesn't have an issue last two last two or more days with that all tires are new and inflated we have fuel 
full tank of diesel, you'll return it full. And that's that. I hope you have a very good journey.